With a record breaking 24 races on the calendar this season, it's safe to say that the variety of venues that the sport visits means that some tracks will inevitably be more popular than others. So we went through the trouble of compiling a list of some of our favourites, as well as some of the snore inducing tracks that the F1 Circus will be visiting this year. Let's get started. The Newcomers Lucille International Circuit, Qatar of the newer F1 tracks, this might possibly rise pretty far in the rankings, but with just one go at the circuit in 2021, it feels too early to declare without a good sample size. Lausel was designed for motorcycle racing, but the long, open, angled turns looked to function well with Formula 1 vehicles and drew praise from the drivers when they raced there two years ago. Qatar has now been added to the schedule on a long-term basis, so we'll have a better understanding of the level of racing around La Salle in the coming years. Las Vegas Street Circuit, USA We can't draw any conclusions about Las Vegas just yet because F1 hasn't raced through the streets of Sin City yet, but we can provide some insight into what it may look like. There's only so much you can do with street circuit layout, and by the standards of modern F1 tracks, it appears rather simple for the drivers to grasp, with multiple lengthy straights interspersed with kinks and chicanes. The usage of the famed Las Vegas Strip, on the other hand, will undoubtedly make it a spectacle to behold. Time will tell whether it proves to be a challenge or not, but sometimes a difficult layout isn't everything. It's about the racing produced by the circuit. What is known for sure, however, is that a lot of drivers are very excited for the opportunity to race there. Barely better than nothing Miami International Autodrome, USA While the spectacle of racing around Florida brought out all the stars and phony marinas in Miami, first impressions of the real racing on the circuit in 2022 were not favorable. Drivers complained about the track surface, and there were concerns about safety in the second sector, particularly at the narrow turn of 1415 Chicane, which climbs over a crest and sends drivers into a wall upon exit. Both Carlos Sainz and Esteban Ocon crashed in the same turn a day apart from each other, and both said that the crash was harder than it should have been. The Alpine driver had crashed into the concrete barrier at turn 14, suffering a 51G impact. What's unacceptable really, it was 51G for what should have been not such a big impact, said Ocon. Yesterday, Carlos got hurt, I got hurt today as well. The FIA should push harder for our safety. The important thing is that we're able to race and I'll be able to race as well. The track's uneven surface also exacerbated certain teams' problems with the porpoising phenomenon, leaving Mercedes especially vulnerable. We, of course, expect some changes to the Miami track before Formula 1 returns in 2023, and hopefully the drivers will be more accommodating this time. Yaz Marina Circuit, UAE it may host the season finale year after year, but it's difficult to find a place in the pantheon of modern F1 tracks on the calendar for Abu Dhabi. The circuit changes implemented in time for 2021 undoubtedly helped, with the slow chicane in the first sector replaced with a longer run to turn 5, and the three apex chicane in the middle sector removed in favour of a long left-hander. Opening up the apex to the penultimate curve has also made the track a faster overall layout and a more thrilling ride for the drivers, although aside from the title dramas of 2021 and 2010, there aren't many standout races from Yaz Marina. Circuit de Barcelona, Catalunya, Spain There has been some terrific racing in Barcelona in the past, not every year to be sure, but given how much testing there's also been at the circuit and how well the drivers know it, it just doesn't seem to have the same excitement element. It's a fantastic all-rounder of a circuit, with low, medium and high-speed corners to handle, which is why it's such a wonderful test track. But, with the exception of home heroes Fernando Alonso and Carlos Sainz, the drivers don't seem to have much passion for racing at the circuit. The removal of the chicane in the final sector to recreate the last sweeping right-hander of yesteryear may be a start, but it will remain on the wrong side of our list until we witness some genuinely exciting races that other circuits manage to conjure up on a regular basis. Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez, Mexico now, before you get too worked up about the Autodromo Hermanos Rodriguez appearing in this lowly category of our F1 track ranking, there is a huge disclaimer. The Mexico City Grand Prix and the support for Sergio Perez are unrivaled. 
It has possibly the best atmosphere at a race weekend of the entire season, but does it inspire the same level of awe and racing as some of the others on this list in terms of track layout? Unfortunately, no. With the exception of the massive 1.2 km pit straight, which has seen the cars reach Monza levels of top speed, the rest of the lap is quite slow and technical, with some medium speed corners in the middle sector, and the amount of wheel to wheel racing is usually lacking. The reprofiled twisty final sector through the Forosol Stadium is visually stunning, but you get the impression that the traffic coming through is more akin to your morning commute than a Grand Prix. The Creme de la Creme Circuit de Spa-Francorchamps, Belgium Along with the circuit next on this list, Spa often shows up as being at the top of the driver's favourite tracks in Formula 1. The track is the longest on the calendar, but it also features some of the sport's most beloved corners, with the plunge down from La Source, followed by the flat-out rise through Eau Rouge and Radion to kickstart a rip-roaring lap through the Ardennes. G-forces are significant through the stunning turns of Pouon and Blanchimont, with drivers working hard through some of the calendar's fastest corners in search of the best lap time. Above all, its historical importance cannot be overstated. The track first hosted a Grand Prix in 1925 and has hosted one every year since 1985. Combine that with the fact that weather is usually a factor and you have a recipe for some very exciting racing. Suzuka Circuit, Japan after his final practice session at Suzuka in 2022, Sebastian Vettel stated that the Suzuka circuit must have been designed by the gods, and it's easy to see why. The first sector's uphill S's are followed by a high-speed mix of brilliant, as the downforce of Formula 1 cars is truly put to the test, as well as how brave the drivers are feeling. How late can they dare to brake for the spoon curve? How much speed can they carry through the Degners? Do you try a daring pass through the final chicane? A mainstay on the modern Formula 1 calendar and a host to some of the all-time great individual drives, there's not a single person on earth that would dare scorn the track. Silverstone Circuit, UK What better place to race at then, the site of Formula 1's inaugural race in 1950. The layout of Silverstone has changed several times over the years to keep up with how the sport has evolved, the most recent in 2010, but its most iconic corners have remained throughout, and seeing a Formula 1 car work its way through Cops, Maggots, Beckets and Stowe in qualifying trim is a wonderful side of both driver and machine working at full capacity to this day. Combine that with plenty of opportunities for wheel-to-wheel -wheel racing and its uncanny ability to produce iconic and earth-shattering moments, and you have one of the greatest F1 tracks of all time. And, just as a bonus, with the majority of the teams based in and around the area, it serves as a home race for a sizable portion of the paddock. Autodromo Jose Carlos Paz, Brazil being roared on by Pat Crowder Interlagos, still one of the best F1 tracks in the world, is an exhilarating feeling for our F1 cast. And despite the fact that the circuit is more than 80 years old, modern Formula 1 cars do not look out of place, and it consistently produces great races year after year after year. Of course, the title deciders at Interlagos will be at the forefront of people's minds. But don't forget that the track itself is fantastic. The Senna S downhill plunge round and down to Decida do Lago presents a great overtaking opportunity. The sharp uphill through the high-speed right-hander Ferradura is a neck killer for the drivers and the nailing Jung Kao exit is critical to finishing the lap properly. We wouldn't have it any other way. It's a true driver's circuit. And that about concludes our list. What did you think? Were there any tracks we should have mentioned? Maybe we were too strict on some of them please let us know in the comment section down below. Now, if you enjoy the video, make sure to like, subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified of our next uploads. Check out our other videos on the screen right now as well. Thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon.